In the last episode, we had an interesting trip together with Stefan and Jeanette along the Colombian coast. And after a failed attempt, the second time we had a smooth passage through the Panama Canal. I love you! Yeah, you, you should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. We will see, we will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Dat was de eerste serie. We're in the Pacific, darling! It was so nice to meet Fernando there again after we met them two years ago in the lockdown period in the British Virgin Islands. And they live in uh, Panama and they really treated us on a very nice lunch. And Fernando drove us through Panama to try and find the most fresh vegetables and fruits and then all the shoppings we did. It was very nice. Thank you very much, Fernando. We're going to refuel. We only stayed for one night in La Plajita and then immediately continued to the Galapagos. So we wanted to be in time to do the crossing with the rest of the Glebo group. Thanks guys! Bye bye Panama. Wil je de spinnen hier tussen die boten zetten? And we're first starting with an hour of rest. We're gonna pass the islands in front of us, right through the anchorage. Kind of busy, here. Yeah? It was an exhausting couple of days trying to go into the Panama Canal twice. Luckily, we succeeded the last time. We wanted to do all the shoppings for at least 4,000 miles crossing. And hopefully we can spend some time in the Galapagos, but that's not clear yet. Everybody is really tired. <laughs> the captain is exhausted. What's the other guy's name? Thomas is already in bed. Thomas is already in bed. So it probably makes sense uh, that we just put the main and the, and the jib on. And we're still going almost nine knots. Perhaps a little bit more when we pass the island. For tonight, the wind is supposed to go a little bit more to the back. And we might set the spinnaker, but we might wait until more tomorrow morning. Unbelievable, but we had to go through the doldrums. But according to the forecast, if we go south immediately quickly, we will have some wind. Maybe we are really lucky. Thomas has been cutting stuff for almost two hours. He's doing all the work. I'm, I'm only doing the mushrooms. Champignon. Selling butterfly. It was almost, it was almost there cutting all the vegetables and, uh, and he started cutting the meat as well. But we found a piece and threw it, uh, well, no, not threw it overboard. We use it as a sacrifice for Neptune. Yeah, so we don't have to cut your hair at the equator. <laughs> it was the bell peppers that did it. His favorite vegetable. Yeah, now we take the compost now. Oh, it's not already. Life on. Time to get the uh, A2. Yeah. Okay. 
We want to stay in the wind, so we need to go a bit more away from Galapagos, more to Ecuador for that. But. Would you take the time, Jan? receive you on the AIS. What's f so funny that we are here at the same time? Incredible. So obviously the repairs have gone well and you've gone through the canal and you're on your way to Galapagos. That's fantastic news for you. Well done. Over. Broadsword. Broadsword. Oh, broadsword. That's great news. And you make it to Galapagos in time to join the fleet. Over. Right, if the wind stays like this, we will be just in time. But So with this line, we can take the tack of the sail towards the windward bow. We tried it before, we went up to 160, 165, but um, it was not quite stable because there's not enough wind yet. It's a pity because otherwise our VMG would be a lot higher. On the other hand, we have to stay in the wind area before we head directly for uh, Galapagos. It's uh, around noon now on Saturday. So we left uh, Friday late in the afternoon from Panama, from La Playita, and uh, whew, not too bad, about 700 miles uh, to go. So we need an average PMG of uh, somewhere between five and five and a half, uh, which shouldn't be too difficult. We can always uh, get there on the engine as the start of the next leg of the Gliwo is um, uh, it's on the 31st of March at noon, so exactly five days from now. And the wind is dying on this. <laughs> Just a little bit uh, too close to the edge of the wind area. Uh, seven knots of wind, so we go higher and higher. We're passing a little island in the middle of the sea, it's kind of a rock. It's called Morpello, apparently Colombian, and there's even a ship there. Oh, it's a passenger ship, 31 meters, so apparently you can go there. Yeah. Just in time again with uh, getting the spinnaker down. Well, in the meantime we have uh, 26 knots of wind and we jibed. As uh, we plan to at noon on uh, Sunday. Sunday today, what? Right? Sunday the 27th of March. It's a pity that we can't see Max. Uh... Well, we, we could have stopped at the island. <laughs> Maybe we have internet there. Yeah. Four knots now. <laughs> so we just passed Maupello. Instead of putting the A2 up on the other side, we were smart and we put just the sole end happy captain kijk voor de mensen zeg maar die uh, captain bereiken niet kennen zoals ze ook kan zijn zeg maar hè? <laughs> jesus wie heeft de tijd wie heeft de tijd opgepakt Dan zal dezelfde smeerlappel zijn die daarvoor de verkeerde zeep heeft gebruikt. We have to take a little bit down. So if, the, if we had something floating, at least uh, the daggerboards are going to hit it before the sail drive or the rudder does. Uh, we heard two banks, so probably first the uh, hull hit the tree or maybe went on top of it. Because it, it is pretty much uh, out of the water most of the time. And then uh, the de I saw the daggerboard move and I uh, looked uh, to port after the first hit 
and we saw the, the tree uh, drifting uh, behind us. The rudder and uh, the shelter seem to be okay. There's no water ingress neither in, uh, in the bow nor uh, in the engine room. So, uh, and we did warn uh, the guys uh, behind us. The horizon was in a straight line and apparently uh, broadsword was there as well. Okay, we're gonna check the rudder because we had a, a tree. It was a decent tree. Eh? With some boys around With it. boys around it. We've seen uh, plenty of them today. Most of them with a bird on, <laughs> just to warn you. So we checked everything, even with the camera. There was no water nowhere. The rudders and the propeller were safe. Uh, we informed Broadsword and Horizon, the guys who were sailing uh, behind us. And we could just continue our trip. Sunday evening, getting dark. Frank is there to take the first shift. It is so nice to see this boat racing through this area where there's normally no wind at all. More clouds developing, and some of them are even visible on the radar. Until now, they're all in front of us. The forecast says that the wind is going to turn more to the south. Testing now how high we can go with the A2. We've got it on wind angle 125 now. And that seems to be quite okay. And it's a good way to keep the apparent wind speed between 9 and 10. It would be okay. Then we have about the same speed over ground. The birds have been there all day. It's kind of teamwork where we start all the flying fish and they catch it when they leave the water. Now we've used all sails, uh, except for the symmetrical spinnaker this time. Well, what that uh, had its turn already during the Atlantic crossing. Uh, the wind is turning more to the south, which uh, gives us a different angle. And uh, that's where the code zero fits in really well. So we're, uh, we have been doing uh, eight, nine knots again. Two more cameras.
So we have been following this shower or what it is. Well, we feel like proper ocean racers. Well, they do it with a big depression and we do it with a small shower, but we're keeping the same position and keeping the same wind all the time. Which really helps because we thought that uh, the wind would be down at seven, eight, nine knots now. And the last part we were even completely upwind. We had to roll in the Code Zero because the apparent wind went up too much. But we could roll out the jib and point up very high. It looks like Great Circle really wants to see the Galapagos as well. Uh, this speed we're going to be there in the middle of the night. So maybe there's an after party for the farewell dinner party. You can see that we're approaching the Galapagos. Two boobies just landed on our bow. Booby, 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 booby. When we were approaching the Galapagos, the boobies landed on our bow. And in the beginning we thought, oh, that's really nice. It's a beautiful bird and we leave them there. You can see that the animals on the Galapagos are absolutely not afraid of people. That's completely different than in the rest of the world. You can't sort of chase them away easily because they just look at you and they ignore you completely when you try to. So we're almost at the equator. Well, basically we wanted to give a sacrifice to Neptune. Yeah, and we thought it would be a good idea to give him Thomas. Uh, well, he was going into the ocean as we thought we would have no wind at all and the blue seas, but it's dark, he's asleep, uh, there are waves. So it's probably not a good idea. A very special Calvados from Michel Bouvelli might be accepted as well. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, yay! Ja, dat is gewoon voorbij. Dat is ook niet gezellig. Is dat de goed om de Galapagos? And then we arrive in the Galapagos. And we will have exactly 24 hours before the start of the rally. Kijk of je zij onder zit. But already today, actually exactly when we arrived, the first group of monohulls and two uh, catamarans already left. And I think that's a good idea because we will be faster than most of the monohulls and then at least we will be one big group on the, on the big ocean. We were just in time to wave them goodbye. And then we came into the harbor and I really had to cry. Morning. Everybody was waving at us and making noise. And it was such a good welcome. It was so good to be back with the group again. Yeah, man. Crazy flavor. 
Hi, Garrett! So after this warm welcome, we spent 24 hours on the Galapagos, which was really nice. Then the next episode will be about to start the next morning and the big crossing. <laughs>